questions. Uh, good evening. Um, welcome to Quarry Valley Unified Union School District uh, board meeting. Please stand, face the flag for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve approval of agenda. I'd like to add something. Okay. Under, it's going to be quick too. It's not, I know the meeting is fast. Oh, business. Um, I've got one thing about uh, mm -hmm. um, making a motion for um, the cost to run each school. And under old business, I've got some quick, just quick questions about the um, budget uh, season and about some uh, money that we approved, um, the $40,000 that we approved. I'd like to have a brief discussion about that. And that's under new business? Yeah, because I don't think we've ever discussed it before. And I'll make the motion to. The other thing is, I don't know how much information we'll be able to provide since it's new. Since we did not. Right. Apply, it's it's quick a asking, okay. and then it can be for next meeting. Sure. That'd be, that'd be great. So, okay. Yep. That'd be perfect. So, if there's it, you know, I'll write it down and we'll get it ready to go for So, it. basically, it's motions to, it will be to, to have, if a motion's made, it would be to have Question. the information delivered yeah. for the next following meeting. Okay. And then I'll, I'll ask about the budget discussion and just, you know, brief, brief discussion. And then, you know, because I know we're supposed to start. Okay. Another time. I, I don't know if this is um, to bring up now, but I think the future meeting date is correct on the current agenda. I don't know if we just need to modify that. It's says September 3rd. Right. Calendars say that the second Thursday would be some like the 12th. The 12th. The, 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 the 12th. Okay. It should be 12th, yes. So, so we can just make that change and... and you could, you could also make that change when, you get to, get to that when we get to it. Okay. Okay. Um, do I need a motion to? Oh, no, you just need to just, approve. You just need okay. to vote on. Just need a, 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 a. I'd like a to have a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. It carries. Okay. General public comments. Hi, can you please? Uh, do you have any comments for tonight? Eric, she'll be later. Uh, later? Oh, that's right. It's on later on the agenda. Sorry. Okay. Moving on to uh, consent agenda. Um, a motion to approve the minutes of the July 10th, 2024 meeting. I have one um, on the discussion, it said Linda asked that her notes be attached to the minutes, blah, blah, blah. Linda felt it was important that Jay knew how hard the board worked on this. I I don't think it was I was asking Jay. I think, <laughs> think I was saying that it was just generally that the board had worked very hard on this. Uh, um, Jay's this, statement. <laughs> on that, yeah. So. I mean, I'm glad. It's a correction of what know. Linda said. It's not what Jay said. It's a correction it's of what Linda, what Linda said. Right. Okay. About Jay. Yes. Yeah. Linda's statement. Yeah. Thank you. Brief motion with corrections. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? If there's no further discussion, motion carried. Okay. Approval of the warrants. Do I have a motion to approve the warrants? All in favor? Opposed? Any discussion? 
Opposed? Motion carries. Or do I need to go back, Mike? Just to, yeah, we'll fix it next time. Okay. Okay, uh, GRCSU board um, meeting report. Um, we started working on our our goals, our yearly goals. Um, that was kind of the the, the biggest thing um, that we we started putting together. Those we also um, uh, passed our mission statement um as well um do you have anything to add mike okay moving on yep. there's a vision and a mission so that's, that's right a... vision and a mission sorry thank you uh moving on to old business uh community use of schools school facilities discussion were, were you going to bring anything back joe I you have something i did do something that i gave to chris um that's a very simple you want me to go ahead chris yeah. it's a very simple recommendation uh it's raising the uh the custodial fee from 36 dollars an hour up to 40 dollars an hour in consultation with lewis that seemed to be prudent we were not charging enough for a custodial fee. So taking that from 36 to $40 an hour. And then uh, for uh, facility use, going for uh, doing an hourly rate instead of a uh, one time rate of $100, do it $40 an hour, uh, which seems to look, be a little bit more prudent for people maybe coming in for an hour compared to maybe an A tournament who may be there for eight hours a day. So uh, $40 an hour. Uh, custodial rate and a forty dollar an hour facility use fee. So, eight hours of AU would be almost double, more than double than what you're charging now. Okay. That just seemed to be the easiest way to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's you know a lot of different scenarios out there. What other schools do, but that seemed to be the simplest way and the most bang for the bang for your buck. Okay, thank that you. That would be my recommendation. Forty and forty. Thank you. Yep. Um, so do I have a motion? Do I have a motion to approve the new fees for community use of school facilities? I'll make the motion. Any discussion? Was there any um, talk about minimum? Like, like, for example, you know, somebody's only going to be there an hour, you know, or, you know, a very, very short time versus sometimes we look at the longer program yeah, right now if somebody came in for an hour or rented the building for an hour they'd be charged 100 bucks this way oh. they will only be charged 40 dollars so it's 40 dollars an hour for the custom for the facility use fee and, uh, i have a then again, the custodial fee only gets charged if custodians are on duty or uh, beyond their regular work days so if something happened let's say the an out of uh, town sewing club wanted to come in on a Monday night from five to six. The custodians were already there. They're not getting charged that that custodial fee. But if they, they wanted on Saturday, they would. Would they still be charged a uh, building fee? Yeah. So building fees, and there's a minimum building fee regardless. Forty forty dollars an hour, regardless. Right now, they come in for an hour, they get getting charged $100. Right. Any exceptions? Mm -hmm. Any exceptions? The exceptions would be if they were a, a West Rutland based organization, they wouldn't be charged at all. Okay. They don't charge anybody. If it's 50% more of the population coming in is a West Rutland resident, then that, then the, the fees are waived completely. So so any of our Quarry Valley schools, as long as it's from that, that town, it's right. okay. Yep. Okay. Or is it from any Cory Valley town to any Cory Valley school. Well, I, I hadn't thought of that. I was just thinking of West Rutland residents using mm -hmm. the West Rutland school. Okay, so, and, and so, so on. So Pulte came in, I, I don't know. That would be a discussion you'd have to have. Okay. But that, that was not my consideration. Okay. 
So this proposal is just for the West Rutland schools, which is that what we're saying? Cory Valley. So it covers, so like at Pontley um, residents, we're gonna use Pontley High School. Right. And, and so Proctor the same. Yep. Okay. Any further discussion? Well, should we put that on the next time and talk about if you want to talk about it? Well, no, I mean, we should do this, but if maybe in the future, talk about it, like you just said, only comes to West Rutland since we're Corey Valley. Do we let them go? Do we charge them? Good <laughs> Tom says that's not enough. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even sure what scenario that would really happen if you're right, right. A Boy Scout. Well, <laughs> you're going to go to. We we hear all sorts of scenarios here. I'm finding out after this um, under a year of my experience here. <laughs> so when the custodians are working Saturdays, Sundays, they're getting time and a half. Right? Yeah. Okay. No, well, that's one of the reasons we, we were not charging enough at the custodian yeah. fee. It was actually uh, I think we were charging thirty dollars an hour. It's actually was working out. Coffee yeah. was thirty six dollars an hour. So Lewis thought raising that up to forty, you yeah. won't have to change it for a few years. Yeah. Okay. Any further questions, discussion? Um, do I have a motion for what Joe said? I did the motion. Okay, a motion's been made. Um, we've already had our discussion, but any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Um, Me. Yep. So we've been talking about asking for the cost, uh, how much it costs to run each building. I'd like to make a motion to um, that we, as a board, uh, each board member get a copy of that by next, um, maybe before the meeting, so we could look at that and to have um, be able to have a discussion if need be. Um, but I'd like to get the cost to run each building. So can you elaborate on what you meant run the building? Because I think there are a lot of factors. So. Well, oil, heat, um, electricity. I don't know. I, it'd be nice to ask other board members, do you want to know yeah, how much it costs for the, the whole thing, the whole shoot map. The, the IAs. Um, so the, operating expense. Operating expenses. We could provide a, a ballpark number but to, to nail down a specific number it might be very difficult because that number varies from month to month obviously depending on the, the weather outside and, and a variety of factors so we can you know give a ball like look under last year this was yeah. for this so i think we have to understand people have jobs to do too so if we want to push that back to say october or november possibly but um as we're starting the start of the school year to sit there and spend time to look at go back a year and look at a month to month and try to that's asking a lot of work of the business office and other individuals. I understand that, but well, I've been business. asking about this for a very long time. So well, specifically, very long time. Right, the, well, you may have been, but the board hasn't. And I think that's one of the things I just want to make sure, though, that what we provide for the board is what they want. But all, there are a lot of factors. We did this with Wells Springs and we gave them a ballpark because understanding that's, you know, with the kids moving in or, you know, they like said just. With the temperature, you know, fluctuations of temperature, you know, facility usage, whether it be during the uh, the fall or the winter, you know, basketball, even events, there are a lot of factors to that. I think we also have to look at if, when we bring in the facilities or capital maintenance plans that West Rutland might have a lot of a lot more money that has to be put into it for maintenance over the next five years, as opposed to say, uh, Pulton Air Proctor. I think there's, so. There are, there are a lot of things. So I want to know how far down the rabbit hole the board wants to go, and then how much time is. See, see, you need need to October to provide a very thorough report. I, I would say a little more time would allow us to, to to really start to you know go into detail with this as opposed to just a very surface level ballpark. And are right. you saying that we should include we you um asking, rec maybe recommend or would like that's fine. Okay, you know we'll provide that information, but we just need to know how far down you want to go because when you say the whole shebang, what does that really mean? Because your definition of whole shebang might be different than someone else's. So. This would have been nice to know when I was asking almost close to a year ago, and you're just going yacht yacht, and you provide it. So we got to. Tom, you were. Uh, I'm sorry, Tom. What was that? 
with the Alaskan and how about didn't you so, just finish the year at I just want to also just run board about supernaturalism and uh and so I tell I understand your frustrated but no, I'm, I'm good you uh you just finished the year in for 2023 could we um get those numbers from 2023 or go back to 2022 whatever the, whatever the pleasure of the board is so how does the board feel about that getting the end of the year report from each school from so that we would have something um for our next meeting it doesn't have to be perfect i don't think the numbers are the question, I think it's the timing of when we want them is the question. We've also been talking, and I, I you know, in the past about oh, but that was, I was going to put that on the next one, so I'm not going to bring it up, but um, I just think it would be nice to have something for next meeting, you know, even if it's the end of the year. And then we can look at it and say, um, great, thank you. Um, by uh, this is a great start. Um, you know, uh, let's let's add something. Let, let's start with something, and then if we need to add more, we can add more, in you know, in October or November. But if we have something to start with, like the end of the year, that um, I know that you have numbers for the end of the year. Maybe we can do that. Start with that for. And, and maybe not do 2023. What was 2022? If you have 2023, that would be great because that would give us an opportunity to go forward. But we, we do have maintenance costs coming up as well. Uh, so I will right. speak with Lewis tomorrow. We will begin. So I think what the board is asking for is if we were to close down one building, what would the savings be? You know, so we're looking at a, a building by building cost. And so if we were to, to, the board would make a decision to close a school down and depend on what that school would be, what would be, you know, what would be savings to the, the district just based on shutting that school down from an operational standpoint. We're not talking about staffing because that, that, you know, it's a very complex process. So when you shut a building down, we're looking at, uh, you know, the staff that you know, we, we shifted around. We're looking at, you know, uh, rifts. Uh, seniority is just it's a very complex process so we can just look at from a operational maintenance standpoint you know what we do that that, that that we'll have that information for you so the board can then discuss the cost of closing down a school and the savings of that okay and it's it's just a discussion it's you know it's well i don't I, yeah, it's just the beginning you ask for the information what to do with it is up to you and over the horse again which i know i missed last month's meeting and i apologize but two meetings ago we we're talking about what are the breadth of data we would need to look at the financial health of the district projecting into the future and then what are solutions for addressing problems right so just want to make sure that that's maybe where we're still at I don't feel like anything's changed since. Yeah, you know. yeah, that's where that's definitely where we're still at. I missed last month's meeting too. Oh, point of, of data. There may be other data points Sorry. that we might need. Yes, for yes, yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, which just a beginning, and, and sure that's, that's just that's something that Tom. Okay. Yeah. For for a while. I mean, that's a. It's in the form of a motion, so that means that everybody can say their piece, and then we vote on. What it is. Can you restate the motion, Linda? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to uh, for the board to look at the uh, now I said up, operational costs of a building to look at maybe 2022 and 2023 of the operational costs of each building in Quarry Valley. For next, I maybe even a couple. Well, when we ever get it, we'd get it a little bit before, so we could take a look at it before we come to the meeting. Okay. okay. So a motion has been made. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed. Mm. Motion carries.
All right, moving on to pass by majority. What's Oops. that was passed by majority. Thank you. Uh, moving on to new business, um, the theater program. I I am just here because Joe had told me he couldn't be here, and I'm just here if anybody has any questions for me, basically, and then I'm out of your hair. So I don't know what's been discussed so far, what hasn't been we discussed. really haven't. Do you want to maybe just describe what you're planning for the, sure. the program? Sure. So it's for Poultney um, High School Theater Program to restart back up. I know it got kind of closed off during COVID when everything happened. I know that there is a like a whole Cory Valley theater program, which is great, but I think it'd be great too to get, you know, Poultney's back up and running. Um, I have a lot of alumni from the theater program that is willing to, you know, help out for free and, you know, do, you know, hair, makeup, costuming, you know, we've got a lot of stuff left over that can be reused. So I don't think it's going to be something that's going to financially harm the school in any means. Um, we were talking about, you know, doing just a smaller play twice a year, you know, nothing humongous, but you know, that's just kind of what we were looking at. And I've sent my resume in, so they should have that up front here at some point, maybe tomorrow she'll get it. Um, you know, I don't know if anybody has questions or. Is there a cost? Is there going to be a cost to us? I believe it's already in the budget. From my understanding, that's what I was, I understand, but I don't know that. I mean, you know, obviously we pay or have people pay to come watch. So it makes money in a sense. I know that there is, I've talked to Joe a little bit. They have the lighting and everything still from the past. Um, there won't be a cost in terms of somebody coming in to do hair and makeup because an alum has already said she will come in and absolutely do it. Um, there won't be a cost for somebody to run lights because, again, he's an alum and he runs tech and he said he would absolutely do it. I've got two other alum who said they would be happy to help with costumes and sewing and, you know, anything that's needed there. So I, I don't think that anything that would be out of budget would be, you know, a lot of local people in Poultney are willing to donate materials, you know, for sets and props. And I know when I was in theater, a lot of the time we like theater cast brought props in ourselves and we just tagged our names on it and we took it home at the end of the show. And so I, I think there was a, something about the budget that Joe had said, but I wasn't here for that. So I don't know if that's in the budget or what, but my understanding is it is. So that's all. I can't really give you a solid answer on that one. That'd be more Joe's department, I think. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. We don't need a motion or anything. We could just say it's happening. It's okay. The board typically does a motion on a school program but i think i would if we're going to make a motion i would encourage me the board to table this just when we have a better understanding of cost and when joe could be here to talk a little more about how this is going to look or how it's going to operate yeah i don't think you could put a, a you know restart a program put a new program and we just the majority of the board is concerned about the cost of, of so, utilities and stuff so I, I think anything that has to deal with cost from from this point on we need to to be careful what we're doing because we can't imply we're concerned about one thing and then not be concerned about everything okay so so we will table it um for further discussion next month when joe can be here and um we'll we'll let you know thank you guys You're welcome. thank you okay moving on to visit Proxy, Chris. Could you yeah. So each year at the fall meeting, uh, we have the uh, yeah, the VSBA VSBA fall conference, which is the, the this year the VSBA uh, annual meeting. The fall meeting will take place virtually on the, either the twenty fourth 
but on the 25th at the uh, fall conference, Bisbet has a meeting. I do believe, Linda, you, you've been attending these meetings in the past. I've seen your name on the, uh, the minutes and the attendance. Uh, but what each district has to do is either select a representative to vote on their behalf, or if no one will be present, they will then have to allow a visit to vote in, in, uh, on, you know, in proxy on behalf of the, the Cori Valley. So I think what would the board would need to do is make a motion if someone's going to be at the uh, the fall meeting, if they would be willing for that individual then to vote on behalf of Cori Valley. Um, so. Okay. Um, so is there a motion? I'm going, so I would be happy to do it. I mean, it's a learning experience um going to these meetings and meeting with all the people that are from Vermont so you learn as you go but I'm willing to go and um, listen and be the proxy of it so we've been hoping and hoping in years past to try to get more senators and legislators to come you know um my feeling has always been that uh, if they listen to the superintendents who attend these meetings and know what's going on in their school systems, maybe we would not be in the um, place we are. But, um, you know, I don't know. They're hoping, you know, BSBA is hoping to push to get more people who make the decisions for the schools to be at the meeting so that they can hear some of the, the things that um, the people are, are trying to do with. And it's, you know, it always, you know, I know it always comes back to money, you know, it's coming back to money or making a decision. Last year, there was some discussion about making decisions, but there's no money to back it up. You know, they make a law, but there's no money to back up the. So we're scrambling then to try to to deal with the law, but we don't have any money to back it up with. I think this discussion was whether we're going to have who the proxy was going to be, not the not the philosophy of what. I know. Thank you, Mike. I apologize for talking too much. Do we have a to do the be the proxy? Okay, so so. Linda would be happy to to be the proxy. Um, do we have a motion? Okay. So motion's been made. Made the motion. Rebecca, Rebecca has made the motion. Down here, <laughs> um, um, Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Side note, I'm trying to figure out what this stands on their website for the same. It's a school board and uh, insurance trust. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, next item under new new business is West Rutland School Capital Maintenance Request. I've included uh, two bids for the board, one involving uh, replacing, and I brought this to the board's attention uh, in May. We have a 1970-era panel box from Federal Atlantic. Uh, that is no longer supported. In fact, we're lucky that we have insurance with that panel box. Uh, they went out of business because of how bad they were. It was installed when the gym was built in the 70s. Um, we had to pay $1,100 just for a replacement fuse uh, breaker. Um, and uh, I went back, I brought in an electrical engineer who in 1996, was at West Relic School and recommended that that board, that panel be replaced in 1996. I happened to know him and brought him back in in 2024. And he goes, I can't believe I'm looking at this 30 years later 
28 years later that this has not been replaced. This needs to be replaced. Mm -hmm. uh, we cannot find electricians to work on it. Um, one guy uh, who has provided us the bid uh, helped us out. He's West Rutland alum and helped us out, but it is something that uh, last year failed. You cannot find these replacement breakers. And it is in both the, the electrician or the electrical engineer and the electrician's uh, professional opinion, these needs to be replaced. And ASAP, we're on borrowed time. Uh, last year, we ended up having no power for a couple of hours in the building, which shut internet, phone, everything off when that breaker broke. Um, so he has his bid, which comes in pretty reasonable for what we thought was going to be. It will have to be done on a weekend uh, or during a vacation when we shut the majority of the electricity. There are multiple fuse boxes around our building, but this is the main one that controls essentially all the lighting, the phone, the internet, all the electricity to the old part of the building um and the gym okay so i provided that i'd like to be able to access the the and this is also by the way both of these bids or both of these projects this and the roofing are on our um five-year plan as high priorities i only have a couple that are high priorities and these are two of them okay um, the second one is from premier roofing who does a lot of work down at Pulte. uh being highly recommended um, we have uh, leaks all over the place in our building, um, most of which we found have been caused because the main drains off the roof are plucked. So the water builds up and then looks for the, you know, we know water is insidious. Um, and he gives a detailed bid of what that would look like uh, for the work. And we'd like to be able to get both of these done. Uh, the roofing ASAP, as there's a backup, and the electrical, Mr. Uh, Reset told me it's going to take a couple months just to get the electrical supplies that he needs uh, to do this project. So the earlier that we can get this stuff um, on his schedule, parts can be ordered, et cetera. So these are both prudent projects uh, for the maintenance of the building uh, that um, need to be done. Okay. So I'm requesting money from the building fund to uh, to pay for these. Because if not, it would take oh, oh, literally 50% of my maintenance budget to pay for it. Okay. And what are the total costs for each? Um, yep, they are in the, uh, sorry, my computer just went. Uh, we have a bid of $21,452.25 from the electrical. Okay. We we're expecting it to be closer to 30. Um, and uh, the roofing, uh, he says 25 to 35, it depends on um, exactly what he gets when he gets in there. We have a lot of seams that are separating. Actually, the good news is there is good news in all of this. The good news is that the roof is in very good shape. Um, despite what era the roof is, the roof is actually in really good shape. Uh, so it is cleaning up some seams and cleaning these, these major drains, which are like six inch drains cleaning them out all the way down so we can get some water. Cause we've got, you know, discolored ceiling tiles all over the place. We don't want to be, we replace them and they discolor. So we stop doing that. Uh, it, it's, it's unsightly. We, they need to be replaced, but I, I don't want to do it until I get these drains cleaned. Okay. And the rest of the roof last year during uh, the, the closet tournament, we had buckets all over the place um, in the gym. Hmm. Um, so we really need to, you actually, just Wait, that. remember yes i do so um we need to get these things cleaned up okay all right so two two requests so i'll make a motion that we um uh, allow um these two um projects to go ahead because it just seems like we have to do that to keep kids safe in this world and you know it sounds like it has to be done so. dry Make it a motion. Okay. Um, a motion's been made. Any discussion? That would be out of the capital maintenance fund. Yes. Capital maintenance fund. On the um, electrician's. That's fine. Yeah. There's a, there's a couple of lines, right? So there's an assumption that all existing wires and we're going to use no replacement. 
itself. And then you know, the motor starters have been excluded, excluded even more information to be provided on circuit size grades. And do we, anyway, th so the question there is, given that, do we think that this, the, the total might change? Depending Once upon those start motor starters, Mr. Reset and I have been trying to get him to come back. He's been very good to us. No, no ill will. Getting him to come back, I had to figure out what were motor starters. I mean, I'm pretty <laughs> up on building I mean, I've done this long enough that I'm pretty good about that. Um, and they are, there are some 1960 era motor starters down in the furnace room that he is referring to uh, that he would like to change over also. So that might be an addition. Yes. They're made by Studebaker or Ed Solar? It is. Um, my last building still had knob and two when we did a major electrical upgrade. And that there. was just in Rutland about 10 years ago. We at least don't have knob and two here. But we're not far off. The breakers aren't attached to slate, are they? <laughs> okay, so we're we're we moved that far ahead, anyways. It's just amazing because these things are out of sight, out of mind. When we talk about electrical and roofing, that's that's not sexy. That's not anything you see. But we all know from home being homeowners, you're not you can't run a building without them. Do we know when the last time this was sort of looked at, Jay? This particular 1996. 96. And do you know if there's any work done? On that last, you don't know. By the volume of dust <laughs> that is down there, it's been a while. Oh, so I'm sorry. I was talking about the roof. When was the last time? Oh, the roof. Uh, well, we have an annual maintenance each year, um, but uh, it was it was Premier who told us about the drains and came in with with again. When you use the same contractor all the time, I think. Yeah. Bringing someone in with new eyes um, uh, brought up some things that needed to be adjusted. Yeah, that's why I was wondering when was the last time that that was looked at and suggestions were made, and what did um, last? It's all been I hate to say it, it's been all just uh, triage work. So each year we have someone come in in the fall, getting ready for winter to come in a, a different vendor, um, and so we plug holes, do small patches. What we're discovering is that there needs to be some considerable seam sealing, and then the roofs are good. They're not. There's no suggestion of replacing the roofs. They're in really good shape, except again, different set of eyes. You know why the drains and things were originally installed? So that's on the part of the building. Yeah, the outside of the building. We have three different yeah, yeah three yeah. different roofs that are three different. Generations. <laughs> so, a lot of it is well, the gym roof from '96. Yeah, is that that's been that's placed since then. Yeah, yeah. Just for reference, we have eight, about eight hundred forty thousand dollars in our capital maintenance fund right now. Okay. But when you have to do something, you have to do it. Yeah, you do. I mean, really, you have to. No. Okay, any further discussion, questions? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Yeah, yep. Um, next is me also, so I'll just get to it if that's okay. Okay. So, um, Oh. Okay. Um, sorry. That's okay. Um, so uh, West Rowland School Choice discussion. So in July, it was brought to my attention that a student who had been at our school as an eighth grader, seventh and eighth grader on school choice from Mount Holly, um, had been moved. And how this was discovered was that when the business office build Mount Holly. They said that student doesn't live in our district anymore. They've moved. So that led us to figuring out what has what has happened. So Ms. Savini is joining me tonight. Um, it is it is her child uh, who goes to our school. She had called in either February or March, if that's correct. Yeah. Said that we have moved. 
and what else do I need to do? And was told by the office, no, nope, you're good. We'll put it in the system. Well, it, it, it's more than just changing an address in the system. This was a student um, school choice. We, we get parents who call every other week with movement, with, you know, we've moved change of address, um, with different living situations, with split custodies. Schools deal with this on a regular basis. The office never brought it to Mr. Harrington for my attention that this had happened. Um, and it's water over the dam. But had it happened, um, I would have had Ms. Savini um, register her student. Well, we would have been able to come to the board and ask for the board to allow her to stay um, through the end of 2024. Okay, so this was, in, again, in either March, February or March of this year. This was never caught and brought to our attention until July. And at that time, when we would come to the board to allow her to stay for the year, whatever decision came out of that, we would have put, we would have had her at that time when the uh, school choice came up again, which comes up in uh, April and ends in May, she would have gone on our school choice list for next year. That never occurred. Mm -hmm. So, it's not situation. Yes, but so this was school choice. Is this different. was not really this. This was Mount Holly, who does not have a school. So, when we talk about the traditional school choice, yes, the I yeah. oh, well, okay, yeah. Mount Holly does not have a home school, so they have choice to send their kids okay. wherever they want because there is no school in Mount Holly anymore. Correct. So, they chose from Mount Holly to send their daughter to West Rutland. So it's not the typical yeah. 9 to 12 school mm -hmm. program. Okay. So when they moved to Fairhaven, you know, there, there's that kind of that yeah. Cast, Castleton, I'm sorry, okay. to Castleton. Um, when they gave us the address, nobody thought to think, well, it's a Mount Holly student who is here on, uh, under that situation. So, so I have uh, I've apologized to Ms. Sabini uh, immensely uh, because her, her child was not able to register for school of choice. What Ms. Sabini has done is, and per my request, is she has registered her child at, at Fairhaven, which is the school um, where Castleton students live, and she is here tonight. Now we we have a waiting list. To get into West Rutland School. If you remember the last board meeting or two board meetings ago, there was, we talked about school choice quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, our school choice is already at 10, which is what the board sets for in and out for all Bory Valley schools. We have another five or six people on our waiting list. Um, so I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I would, I'm, we're requesting that the board. Um, allow this student to continue at West Rutland, which would make an 11th student. That's mom's request. Um, I can't we can put words in her mouth, so correct me if I'm wrong. No, absolutely. Um, I, I'm requesting that, and I am. It, it really comes down to the board's decision. I'm not, requesting on behalf of the Yes, I'm requesting on behalf of mom, um, trying to not use the student's name, requesting um, for Ms. Savini and her child that she uh, be able to. She's done what she's needed to do, which is to register in Fairhaven. She's told them that I would like school choice to West Rutland, but there is no slot for her child at this time. So we need to create a, a slot. That's is um, that what you're saying? Well, that's the board's decision. I, I I told mom that I would my 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 ask is that there become a, an eleventh, but you're that is up to the board to decide. Chris made it very clear to me that is the board decision. Nothing he could um, ask for. Chris, correct me if I'm wrong. But I'm no, the board. Making sure I get this right. February board sets the, the number of. Uh, sorry, just. Uh, the board sets the number of students who can uh, school choice in, school choice out, and set the number as 10. Uh, so we are locked into that. The board would be the only group that could revise that number. They have to go back and their motion. Uh, we do, you know, we also look at the. Admission of non-resident students, which we the board has also had to consider a few cases last year, which in this case, um, 
his family would be considered as non-residents. Um, so therefore, uh, the choice would either be to the board would uh, either A, accept tuition payments on behalf of this, or would waive the tuition. Now, that would be the, the choice the board could have. So how the student to. How long has she been a student in West Route? How long? Years. How long? Years. And this, what, what grade are we going into? Ninth grade. Pretty major year. I also um, contacted the school in, I believe it was April, to double check to make sure that everything was okay with my address, that it had been updated, and also if everything was all set. And I was told that it was. Again, not knowing there was a school choice application, because in Mount Holly, you just go. Right. Right. So I, okay. as for my ignorance and not knowing that at a new school, that I would have to have applied. Okay. So. Why? So I had to go back to my office staff and remind them that when anybody calls with an address change, it needs to be brought to Mr. Harrington and my attention. So we're aware of it. There's a, a process that failed. Protocol. Yep. There's a protocol that was not followed. So my question would be, if if this if it was granted, would that mean that the student would automatically qualify for next the tenth grade and the eleventh grade and the twelfth grade? Or what's your school choice? Then you're there. I mean, it's a yes. Would we have twelve? Would we have any issues with any of the families that are waiting and and queued in the line? I I, I couldn't speak to that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, okay. That's okay. And uh, not talking necessarily about expanding slots for the whole entire rest of this particular student's career. Would we reduce the number of slots open or available? I don't know. Is that the that, question? Might be would that, like a one-time exception to it, right? But that right. So, but then the next year, you'd only have a seven. Would you only have nine available slots, or is that not how it works? Depending on who graduates, who's a school. So it's a, it's a flexible number anyway. Yes, yeah, flexible. Number. Yeah. Of which I would absolutely be first on race day, putting in my school choice application for her each consecutive <laughs> make sure that she finished yep. where she was because she is an extreme introvert, as am I. So being her is difficult. Um, so and moving her would be very hard. Um, she has you can ask her teachers, she has progressed well. And even just in the last conference, they said she continues to open up um, and become more vocal and participate more. So yeah. moving somebody like her in the last hour to a completely different school district, which would be a high school separate from a nice small school like West Rutland, uh, could be very difficult so i ask that you please allow her to stay okay that absolutely if i had known what my role was would have done what i was supposed to have done to make sure you know okay. if i have had to have been here in the spring i would have been here it was a unique situation that we haven't come across before what why why do we why do we only hold why do we only open it up to 10 students? Because there's a certain percentage that we can only go towards. And okay, so that's here. That's a close to that percentage. Yes. Are we on? We're so, but we're under it. I have to look at the exact number. In fact. Okay. Okay. And the state sets that percentage, Chris. Okay. Is that a piece of information we need before we can? Yeah, I sound. I understand that you need this situation. I would just encourage the board to consider precedent setting, you know, because we're going to have many unique situations come across our desk around school choice, admission of non resident students. You know, uh, I, I, you know, I've spoken with Jay about this at, at length about the this should have been resolved last spring, um, but bring here, but I think we, the board has to seriously consider. 
the consequences of this decision, you know, just looking at you not know, just this, but also uh, moving forward. Mm -hmm. So, because even if you open up to 11, the question really is around that wait list. You still have other individuals on that wait list. Uh, you do have to then do, redo a lottery. We'd have to look to see what that would consist of. Um, you know, to then open up a, the 11th after we have to look at statutory language. Will that be a violation of the statute throughout school choice? So we need we need to to gather information on this before we can make a decision. So are we going to have a decision before the school year starts? Though that's three weeks. Yeah. Three weeks. So close. So school starts. I feel like that's something you have to decide soon. You could re reach out to legal and the board could have a special meeting to it would be the do we need a, a motion for that to reach out to legal and have a special meeting if that's what they want to do I think to we have to do that yeah, yeah. And a lot of things you just brought up we don't have all the information that we need in order to make a good decision so i would say it has to be a special meeting and have to have it would be for school starts mm -hmm. okay so i will make a motion that we hold until we get all the information that we need to make a a, a good decision or, or a decision based on some information that chris will get from legal and we will need to have another meeting to the special meeting. okay um there is three weeks until school starts i know i know i just have a question i might have missed this um in the in the protocol they would have had to reapply in april without a guarantee of getting a spot right. if, when, when, if, yes when the residency moved to from mount holly to castleton had i known that I would have had to go to Chris to ask for permission for her to continue right. at West Rutland at that point in time. Or this school. Then they would have had, right. And then they would have had to apply in April, but it wouldn't have been a guarantee that they're going to keep that spot. Okay. And and how do you decide decide that usually? It, it, so it's a lottery. So you're yeah. pulling, pulling names out of the hat, kind of? Web slots, then there's a, a lottery. Mm -hmm. And that's per statute stay up okay how long has she attended west Rutland school years how is that lottery done literally is you write the names on a piece of paper you put it in the hat you move it up in a public setting and you draw names simple okay. okay we have other students who fall into that and would fall into that lottery category right now Yes. You have a motion. Okay. So a motion's been made. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Will. Um, Do you want to set a date for the special meeting? Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Okay. My June and twentieth. I haven't put it. I didn't put football in. I haven't put anything either. Like we're not doing that. When does school start, Jay? Starts uh, Wednesday, August twenty thirty twenty. Okay. Yeah. That's on there. Chris, when can you have everything ready? Do I think it'd be better off just having the board set a date and I'll just. How about do it via. Um, you can do it. Yeah. Um, you know, the new opening yeah. law. We yeah. have to. Have a warning time. Yeah. You have a warning. We you have, have a warning window. 24 hours. Right. Tomorrow's special meeting. So, but. So uh, give us some dates that to warn. How about, how about the, what's, what's that, Mike? Does anybody have any suggestions on dates? I think this is a week. It's enough time, do you think, to. 
So, uh, yep. it really just depends on conversation with with our attorney. And I, I think, okay, I maybe have an answer by the end of the day tomorrow. I mean, maybe may very quick answer to be honest about this. So. We say like Tuesday, then to me, I feel like we at least owe them. Yeah, a quick and swift. If the answer from the attorney is that we can't do it, then there's well, always right. There, I mean, I'm going to ask the attorney about the, what are the Stop. options for the board to yeah. to to reconsider the school choice slots that they established back in February, right? And then, if one, the board can make that change, then we also have to look at the lottery system, you know, because we have a wait list. So would then we have to then redo the lottery for that one slot that's available, which but if we were doing it for one school, would we have to redo it for all three schools? We would have to have it would be a we both because the we the motion was for 10 intel for all four of our schools. Right. So we would then make a motion for 11 for all four of our schools, which I don't. I don't know offhand with Holney or Proctor what their. I have no idea, but I'm just saying. School choice. So if they yeah. had that as well, and it has to be individual high school. It's not Cory Valley as a as a whole. We, we okay. make a motion as Cory Valley, correct? For our schools. Just sorry, I'm going to ask the, the spelling out of the implications of redoing the lottery. Might be some students who were told that they could go already. Might that might be thrown up in the air. No, there are students who are on the wait list. We're on the wait list. Right. Any student who receives a spot has a spot. Yeah. But if if they have say five students on the wait list, then and I don't know what you know, but uh, we may if we reopen the eleven spots, then those five students would have access to that spot. Yeah. Just as this family would, regardless of circumstances. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. If this had been addressed, would she have been a guarantee? So no, that's so it, no. Is that's is JFK? So that was clear. That was clear. what should have happened was that the minute that school is notified of a change in address, um, the administration should have been notified, and then they would have let me know. Is look at a policy. Anything that occurs prior to spring break needs board approval. So a family would move prior to spring break. I don't have the authority to sit there and say, yes, they could finish out the school year. That has come before the board. This would have been qualified as we've had to do in, in other situations. We would have brought this to, you know, to the board to say this family has moved to Castleton, uh, that you know, we, you know, for educational reasons, you know, we would like for them to finish the year. And then we then would then have explained to them their options for next year if they want to continue, which would have been school choice. And then they would have entered the lottery with other students and and i don't know but if there was you know more than you know there's one spot available there are more than one individual there's a you know likelihood that they may not have received that spot at that time so so i mean i and i know it's, it is honestly it is unfortunate but we also look at we do have policy in place around admission of non-resident students and we you know the board I, just during freshman last year we've had a Two very difficult decisions around families who also had some very unique circumstances. So I just, you know, um, that we just have to make sure that whatever the board decides, just we have to weigh out the consequences and also the precedent that we that we set moving forward. So, yeah. Okay. So, I, so if we want to schedule even something for next week, um, I think out of fairness to this family. The sooner we can provide them resolution with either yes or a no, the better um, to them as you're know, dragging this out. So, how about the 13th or the 14th? Uh, I, I, that would be Tuesday or Wednesday. So, you can't do it. I can't. Okay. All right. So how I, I have board meetings both nights, but it doesn't mean that. Well, maybe we could do it at four o'clock. If we do it earlier, yes. Uh, <laughs> Four o'clock either day. Yes, four o'clock either day would work. And as long as we can sign on virtually, some of us, I think. Mm -hmm. Right. And, that, and I'm even at four o'clock, I can be here in person too. Sure. So if we have you need to have one person in person, which yes, you yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why don't we? I, I'm my vote's for the 13th, but okay. Oh, so me. I'm better the 13th than the 14th. 
Anybody? This is the third at four o'clock, virtual or in person, however. Okay. 